What's up, homies? Welcome back to another comic book review from your favorite guys on the internet, Heroes Reforged. I'm just going to start saying, hey, we're your favorite. We're the best. <laughs> you know and, we are. Uh, you know it. And only if you've been watching <laughs> us for years, do you know that we're actually quite humble and that that's very funny that we <laughs> said that. Anyway, welcome back to another Invincible Anyways. comic review. This week, we're talking Invincible Volume 13, Growing Pains. Named after another classic sitcom, Growing Pains, Invincible 13. <laughs> Adam's never read it. Augustine has read it. I want to jump in this week with questions for Augustine. My man, hit me with what you thought, overall thoughts on the reread. What are you thinking after this volume? On the reread, uh, this volume kind of threw me off a little bit with the art style. I don't think I was ready uh, for Walker's evolution of his art style first of all like having that very first panel be omni man uh mm -hmm. with blood on his face you know i expected mm -hmm. to be to see kirkman's uh kirkman's art but it wasn't and it kind of threw me off and it kind of like ryan otley you mean ryan otley's, yeah. ryan otley's art right yeah ryan otley's art who did yeah. i say bobby Kirk's. kirkman <laughs> oh bobby oh good old hollywood bobby kirk's yeah 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 <laughs> he he's a good artist too sometimes <laughs> um, it kind of threw me off a little bit, but uh, getting into the story, man, this story is, it's rife with just uh, lots of good, what, what, what I pictured and what the feelings that I get from Invincible, this story had all of it because now we're getting to like the nitty gritty of what the Viltrumites really are up to, you know, that there's only 50 of these motherfuckers <laughs> alive. And we saw how Conquest gets his arm bit off and the face scar thing. And we start to kind of see Mark. I think what threw me off about this issue, not to say that it wasn't my favorite, but I felt off reading this issue. It was that Mark was feeling off. I think I was picking up on that like anxious energy of Mark on the verge of losing it and just straight up murdering people at this point. And I was just like, this, this doesn't feel fully invincible, but at the same time, it is like, Mark coming to grips with the power and, and the responsibility of his powers and, and everything that's been that, that this has been building up to. And also, you know, like we get to see the uh, Nolan's books pay off. Like there's so much good stuff in this. How did you feel and uh, feel yeah. going through that anxiousness, Augustine? How did you feel with this? Oh, that felt so good. And he said it on the next panel, too, where he gets his old suit back. It's like, ah, there's that. There's that old feeling. It reminds me of like issue one or two or whenever he throws the trash into space, you know, like that kind of good feelings. Like when times were simpler, he was still trying to go to college and all this yeah. stuff. And now he's <laughs> now he's worried about the end of the world and the crazy Viltrumite stuff. And he's possibly having a baby and just what is going on, man? Like yeah. overall, though, good read, heavy read uh yeah. i want to know what adam thought of it though adam <laughs> yeah seriously it was i have to agree with you i think as you're reading the book because mark is going through so much emotionally and it's written so incredibly well that it completely consumes your own personal enjoyment mm -hmm. maybe not even enjoyment of the book but sort of your perception of what the book is what you're reading who the characters are and, but I found that actually kind of refreshing and a bit surprising that the text on the page could really manipulate my feelings like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it felt kind of good because there definitely are moments where Mark crosses the line and you he yeah. starts to reason why he has to do these things. And it's the classic telltale sign of, of a villain. A villain will always try to justify their actions. Yeah. But then Cecil tells him, like, you're now starting to bend the rules to kind of benefit your own narrative. Yep. Yeah. And I thought that just the fact that the comic book really takes a moment to point those things out and to really sort of like hit the nail on the head and to really solidify like you are trespassing into this dangerous territory, Mark, mm -hmm. that if you really fully embrace this, you may not return from it, uh, the invincible that we've come to love. So I really enjoyed that. And I liked the fact that the book has not just has, has at least said something about that because I think it's very yeah. common in superhero stories that a lot of times those topics are never addressed or very lightly addressed. 
And I feel like this book is always kind of going in and out of that topic of like, mm -hmm. what's the boundary? Where is the boundary? Because Invincible, the world itself has never truly defined a boundary line. Like I think we project what we think is the boundary line. And I mm -hmm. think Cecil at certain points has sort of like try to allude to like, well, this is the boundary line is you kill people, you're evil, even though he has in some ways kind of tiptoed between good and mm -hmm. questionable a lot. 100%, 100%. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I've loved all those elements of it. And then the revelation that Eve is pregnant, <clears throat> I think is crazy. And I think that's going to add a whole insane dynamic. And I'm convinced that by the time Mark gets back from his mission with uh -oh. his father from Alan, we're going to see a fully, <laughs> I, mean, I, I wouldn't want to say an adult, but I would say like a very, uh, an older child, you know, somewhere mm. between the age of like maybe seven and 10 or 12, which means mm. Oliver will probably by that, you know, get a little bit older. And uh, I love think, his new you think, suit. You think Mark's going to be in space for 12 years? You think he's going to be in space for 10 years? Look, man, Whoa. this book has done some crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. <Whoa. laughs> yeah. For real. <laughs> Time but skip love, is not off the table. Yeah, and yeah. I also just loved getting back to Alan and uh, Nolan and to just kind of see, to, to just kind of get the whole thing laid out to us about what exactly has happened with the Voltramites, how this virus, which is kind of crazy that we're reading this issue and we're in the middle of what we're in the middle of. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of nuts. But yeah, overall, I, I, I love the fact that it took me through this really interesting, strange, emotional journey. But I feel like I'm getting to learn so much about these characters, despite the fact that like we are getting more closer towards you know the end the ending of the book than we are the beginning at this point so yeah i'm, I'm loving everything it's, that the story's doing it's yeah. volume 13 out of like i think 25 and yeah. again 25. It, it feels like these past couple i remember when we got to the trade i forget which one it was but i said this feels like it's the sort of second era of invincible mm -hmm. and i'm not going to tell you if i feel like we're in era the next era of invincible yet or not like if we're still in the second if we're moving into the third but it's moving, and I want to go back to what you were talking about. Well, first of all, I love what both of you guys are saying. You guys are geniuses. You guys are geniuses. <laughs> You're both brilliant. I agree with both of you. I was also picking up that stuff, Augustine, the anxiousness. So this is not my favorite volume of Invincible thus far, and I think that mm -hmm. the one before and the one before that I love maybe more, but it's yeah. because of what Mark's going through, and it's because of some other elements. And then Adam, mm -hmm. I'm just going to come right out and say it, Titans. Uh, Man of Steel, Zack mm. Snyder's take on DC superheroes. These yeah. are things that like have dabbled with this morality, but have never to mm -hmm. any kind of a satisfactory degree explored it. And it's crazy to think how, I love what you said, Adam, where you're like, we define this world, we put our own sort of constraints on it. And it's true. I think we define all superhero stories by how we define the already established superheroes. I know mm. in my brain, which characters fall into the Spider-Man category and the Wolverine category or the Superman category, which is maybe the same as Spider-Man yeah. and the Batman category. And <clears> that's <throat> different from Lobo and that's different from Iron Man and it's different from Captain America and all these different <clears> things. <throat> and so for me, I have a hard line where I'm like Batman and Superman, if they're normal Batman and Superman stories, they shouldn't be killing people. <clears throat> Spider-Man should never murder somebody. That should never be explored in a Spider-Man comic. But if you're going to do like alternate reality shenanigans, you know nothing's off the table however it's crazy to me that i still consider mark grayson invincible to be in this category of like <laughs> spider-man or superman even though his stories are so uber violent yeah. because of <laughs> because of story arcs like this because of volume 13 growing pains where he has a conversation with art rosenbaum and he's freaking out about it. And Art's like, but here's the difference. And I was hearing Mark Hamill. But here's the oh, difference, yeah. kid, is you're actually mm -hmm. thinking about it. You haven't gone that far. And then he has a conversation with Eve. And, he, and, and this book has proven why a character like Mark should never murder more than anything I think I've seen in superhero fiction. Like, mm -hmm. can you imagine if there were actually a, a, an effort in the follow-up to Man of Steel to have Superman talk to Lois and be like, I'm never killing again. Because, mm -hmm. you know, and to say yeah. what Mark said, where he was like, it's easy. That's easy. And I, yeah. I should have found another way. And, and I'm not going to cross that line. And, and I scare myself and all the stuff that he was talking about, which was mm -hmm. like awesome. And I'm hearing it and I'm like, he's, he, Robert Kirkman writes him to be so relatable that he really does feel more like us. than. and I read a lot of comic books, you guys, I read a lot of comics and I've been reading stuff that's like, like 
side to the Invincible Universe lately. I've been mm. reading some early Spawn stuff, Savage Dragon, and then even Dynamo 5. I got the first volume of this book that is an image book, and it's a spinoff of Noble Causes, and the group Dynamo 5 showed up in Invincible a couple volumes back. They just popped yep. in for a quick cameo. And I was like, oh, yeah, I never went back and read that. And I'm reading that story, and I'm not trying to disparage other writers and artists' work their stuff was great for various reasons, but when I compare it to the writing in Invincible and the art, but the writing, I'm like, oh, those other comic book characters, they don't feel real. Mm -hmm. And Mark mm -hmm. feels like a real kid. He feels like a real young yeah. person <clears throat> with his flaws and his fears and his turn-ons. And he's this horny guy who's like, yeah, we can go have sex because my mom's gone. And, it, and, and, and then he's dealing with stuff with his brother. And just everything that he's going through feels like it's me in my 20s and early invincible felt like me in my teens and i just I, I think it just comes back to the writing where he can do something mm -hmm. like kill russ livingston the astronaut who was had all the sequids you know controlling him kill him and i'm not immediately horrified and i'm not immediately like nope shut my brain off that doesn't work like i probably would for like a normal superman story or spider-man or whatever and instead, I'm with Mark, and then we get to the end of this volume, and I'm like, God, I love this guy more than ever. And I'm still yeah. on his side, even though he killed mm -hmm. somebody. And he tried to kill Angstrom Levy, you know, issues and issues and issues ago. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. still is trying to justify. He's like, if I killed Angstrom, like thousands of people would be alive today. And that's heavy, man. That, he's that always is calculating. Crazy. He's always doing <laughs> yeah. like the data always. calculations. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then well, at the I, end and, of this. And not just that, though. It's all it's fighting with his nature as well. His yeah. nature is yes. to be an ultra violent Viltrumite. You know, like what do you do with that kind of temper where you know you're uber powerful when you're most mm -hmm. angry? I guess that's mm -hmm. a crazy responsibility mm -hmm. to have. I mean, Nolan goes through that moment in the book, too. Yeah. And he literally tells Alan, I can't go on that ship. If I do, I'm going to rip it in half. And I was like, whoa, whoosh, right. oh my God. Brutal, man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was also fun to see those characters come back because that was a yeah. Star Trek The Next Generation parody yeah. that <laughs> Alan the alien like pushed yeah. out of the way, like yeah. in issue six or something, like yeah. super, super early. They also see them botched a mission. They did. And it's Boy, funny because I'm that like, damn mission. I'm like, they're pretty. They're pretty crappy, but the Star Trek crew also messes up <laughs> yeah. a lot. But uh, anyway, yeah. I thought it was a really fun him, him callback. Him staying, him sleeping at uh, at Alan's house might be my favorite thing. <laughs> oh, sorry, dude, are we keeping you awake? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Right. I heard a lot of I heard a lot of the voice actors this All volume. I heard I heard a lot of them. I couldn't help there's, myself. There's, yeah, there's there's great long stretches of great conversations between characters, yeah. and unlike yeah. honestly, unlike most comics I read, sometimes if I get to those points i go like this oh my god it's gonna take forever <laughs> mm -hmm. whenever we get to something like that in invincible i'm like ooh, let me settle in this is gonna be good yeah, yeah actually yeah. that's I a really that's it. a that's like a really good point to bring up is this is one of the few books that i think i've ever read where we have some issues or some of the volumes that we go through where it's very action heavy or it's dialogue light mm -hmm. this one in particular <clears throat> because there's so much going on it's actually pretty dialogue heavy but yeah. you're completely like captivated by what's being said because you're fully invested in the characters in the story. And I think it really helps. And obviously like we're, I'm experiencing this differently than people did when they first read it. You know, I'm kind of going volume by volume, whereas everybody was going issue by issue, but it still manages to do a really good job of balancing how many characters we spend time with and how many characters get sidelined. But then we kind of come full circle where we balance those out by the time we're at the end of a volume. So you really feel like you spend a good amount of time with everybody you never feel shortchanged almost yeah. at all which right I i'm fl i'm flipping through the digicop of it right now and just they yeah. touch yeah. everybody gets a moment in the story like everybody mm, yeah. gets a little bit of progression in their story and we also get introduced to some characters adam that you don't know much about now nah. but one of my favorite characters is dinosaurus dinosaurus is crazy dope that was cool uh, but also uh fucking thrag Thrag. thrag is thrag is thrag. is at the end of this comic and uh we're gonna start to see a lot more thrag uh <laughs> he might he might do some oh things uh, yeah. Uh, yeah 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 i yeah, was this, a this little show, this set up a lot yeah go for yeah. it Hector. Oh, it's it's guys it's always fun to see the guardians of the globe you know yeah, it's always fun absolutely. to see brit him talking about tucking in brit jr and i'm like yeah mm -hmm. we spent time with him that's cool <laughs> Um, oh, I, what, sorry, one more thing that I really yeah. liked about this comic was mm -hmm. uh, 
the shower scene where Kirkman thought he was going to bring back the, the sequins for the, the second time. And yeah. he, he uh, what's his name? Rudy throws it up. Rudy. And then just, smash, smash, just, smash. just smash, 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 smash. <laughs> I'm like, Oh God, I forgot that that happened because I thought the sequin invasion was going to come back once again, but good yeah. old Rudy just saved the world. That was great. I, I yeah. I'll be honest. I'm a little mixed on the character of Universa. Mm. Who's this like, that was weird. Uh, old school kind of 90s like throwback type character she's almost like a like a hulk character she reminds mm -hmm. me of some characters we've seen in hulk not just because she has green skin but um she's a character that i feel like shows entirely too much skin um mm -hmm. and yet her actual character and her actions were like a great threat, super understandable, super badass. My planet is eight times the size of your planet. I'm going to have to, you know, siphon all the energy. You know, and, and if you, like, you, okay, you, could just, you could just ask. You could ask. And then she's <laughs> yeah, like, that's exactly. not going to work. And like, <laughs> I like her work, weapon but... was really cool. Yeah. And yeah. Ryan Otley draws the hell out of her. So it's, so I'm, yeah. <laughs> there's multiple times where this, this comic book, and I think that like the culture that this comic lives in this kind of like mostly dude centric culture, mm -hmm. you know, that, that all superhero comics are kind of in sometimes it dips into these little areas where I'm like, ah, this is, this is not aging well guys. But then you got a section where like Robert Kirkman zeroes in on Eve's father to show oh, us God. like, he's a, he's a real piece of work. I and was as you're so reading that, it's like, during that it's, scene. It's awful. It's uh. awful. Yeah. It's awful. <laughs> and seeing Mark's so, face on the couch afterwards, just, I'm like, yeah, that's how I felt. Yes. That's how you I know, felt. That we get moments like Alan the Alien and his wonderful girlfriend, who she's like the horniest character in anything I've ever <laughs> seen. And she's drawn and she's got like an incredible body and she's drawn just like over the top. But then I'm like, well, Alan is also like super insane, buff, yeah. ripped alien fantasy. You know, so there's all, like, there's like, there's buff. There's beefcakes and cheesecakes. And yeah. so I, you know, and I am a fan of the history of comics. And I would be lying if I didn't say, like, dude, I like seeing these, like, you know, physically perfect bodies in this, in this over the top exaggerated world. Because I grew up reading comics in the 90s. So, like, yeah, I do mm -hmm. like some of that stuff. That stuff mm -hmm. sometimes, like, kicks ass and it's real fun. But I think what I've enjoyed is seeing what has survived from the 90s and what not. Is what's not survived from the 90s and it's usually mm. the misogyny that's not surviving from the 90s and then stuff that's really cool like venom has evolved and is pretty cool like like Do yeah. venom by donny cates today uh is super dope and donny cates is a writer who i think knows what to bring from anyway so i'm a little up and down with some of that stuff but overall that's why this volume was not a five stars for me it's four <laughs> solid four stars mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I love agree. this volume I agree with that it's great it's great it's great and mm -hmm. and i don't i i uh, I know what's going to happen, but I also I don't know at what pace it's going to happen. So I can't say yeah, I'm, anything. To yeah, Adam. I'm the same you know way. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we, like Augustine and I know it's about to get nuts, but we don't remember quite the degree of the mm -hmm. nuttiness. So we're so mm -hmm. we're like also with like you, Michael Adam. Where you're nuts like nuts or <laughs> uh, yes, well, you want to get nuts? Yes. Come on, let's get nuts. Yes, yes. yes. But I, I just it's you know we're looking at the whole picture in our head and we're like, what's the next sliver going to be? Uh -huh, so uh -huh. in an effort to keep us going with the momentum but not burning us out on one particular thing we're going to bounce back over to our billionaire wolfman buddy with the astounding wolfman volume four guys we're going to finish it we're going to finish it, it we're going to see <laughs> we're going to wrap it up we're going to see what's going on with this guy in this story this is the last volume of the robert kirkman jason howard book the astounding wolfman we're doing volume four next and this may take place before this i'm not sure Right? Like, it depends. If Invincible is in this and he's in his blue costume, definitely takes place before this. If Invincible is in this and he's in his yellow costume, what's going on? If, if, mm -hmm. if they make mention of any of the stuff that happens in this, we're going to figure it out. We're going to figure it out together with the timeline, but we're doing Astounding Wolfman Volume 4 next. And then after Wolfman, we're going to get back to Invincible and see what's going on with the Viltramite War. Don't worry, Adam. <laughs> don't worry. So <laughs> until then, guys. In the comments below, let us know what you thought of Invincible Volume 13, Growing Pains. Who's your favorite character in the book right now? I I don't know who my favorite is. I think it's still Mark, but Alan is up there. He's awesome. And Nolan is a really interesting character right now. He's very interesting. <laughs> um, uh, go read Astounding Wolfman Volume 4. I'm assuming it's available on Hoopla. That's where we've been doing it, right, fellas? Uh, let me double check, but yeah, keep going. Keep going. I'll double, double check. check. 
Get yeah. your library card. Check it out on Hoopla. If not, it is available on Comixology. Uh, check your local library just for physical copies. Libraries are awesome. They got a bunch of great stuff. And uh, Augustine, do we have a confirmation? Is it on uh, Hoopla? Confirmation. It's on Hoopla Digital. I just checked it out, so I'm I literally no excuses, about to folks. Here. No <laughs> excuses, folks. We will see you after you read Astounding Wolfman Volume Four. We'll see you in a week. Bye. Bye. Bye.